And we are live. I love the sound of we are live. <laughs> yes, we are indeed live. <laughs> Greetings to everyone, all of our audiences across the globe um, listening to us at this particular point in time. And of course, to our audiences and our folks and our fans, we'll probably be catching up on the replay later. And um, we bring you greetings all the way. <laughs> um, my name is Modupe, and um, I reside in California. And today I'm so honored to have this beautiful, you know, amiable ladies of many virtues also, you know, joining us together on this platform. It's our second edition, yay, of yeah. creating passive income streams. If we can, you can. And we have for you today a very interesting topic. But before we dive into that, I mean, together, you can see all I mean, our names are right on the screen. I have today with me um, Adebola Colorway all the way from New York. I have Omolara Uti all the way from Houston, Texas, and Mutraya Emily also from Houston, Texas. Hello. Good evening, ladies. Um, it's such an honor um, to, to work with you today. And um, before I really dive in into the topic of the day, I would like for us to kind of do like a little round robin. Let's check in with the ladies. How are you all doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Really I'm good. Start with you. Great. 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 It's a beautiful day over great. here today. Awesome. Great, great. And um, how about you, Amolara? How is your day going? What do you have plans for the weekend? Anything to share with the audience? Um, I don't have any plan for the weekend. I've been home since morning. <laughs> and my kids actually want us to go. I'm like, no, I'm not going out today. Today is not, it's not the best day for us to go out. We can plan for and that for another time. Great. But so far, I'm good. I'm good awesome. Good. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for sharing. And how about you, Mutaraya? Uh, What's your plan for the weekend? <laughs> I know. It's been such an eventful day for me. And, um, Right before this, I just like, okay, I need an hour to myself. I just took a wonderful nap. Me time. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's refreshing. Oh, yeah. That's refreshing. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us need to work up, work very much on that and get mm -hmm. naps, you know, for ourselves. It, it, it recharges us, you know, it reactivates us. We, we, we have the opportunity to, to press the reset button and then we have, you know, more energy to keep running. Yeah, I, I love that. And on my hand here, yeah, it's busy for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fact that the boys are back to school in person, so trying to get ready for the weekend to get, you know, for the week going. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, today is a very special day um, and very significant too, right? Um, a twofold significant day, you know, across the globe. It's 9-11, 20 years ago. Um, that's a special day, right? That kind of resonates with everybody mm -hmm. across the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of souls were lost. And, um, you know, myself and the ladies on this platform, we we, um, we reminisce, you know, with individuals, we commemorate with them and then, we just wish their beloved, you know, families lost that um, the Lord will grant them the fortitude to bear their losses. The Lord will heal our land and then he will grant us peace across board Amen. through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So um, don't be the round robin. That was easy. I will now switch gear and take us to the topic of the day. And so for our viewers, right, already probably already joining us, we appreciate the honor, we appreciate the support. We will also want to kind of, you know, drop in a little caveat. You probably already saw on the on the banner. It's the topic for today is if we can, you also I'm sorry, the topic for today is um, who do you work for? The title of our series is actually if we creating passive income streams, if we can, you can. But we're taking a little bit, you know, and looking at um, the particular topic, who do you work for? I want us to know that we are not here calling out names of organizations. We are not here calling names of businesses. Um, that's not the idea. So um, I can tell you that we have the ladies on this platform know their onions, by the way. The ladies on this platform are actually here to dissect and to actually go into detail and tell you, you know, those important business nuggets that you need to hear, that I need to hear that we all need to hear. And so we're not looking at it from the perspective of employer, I'm sorry, organizations and name calling, but we are looking at it from the fact and the perspective that traditionally we've been wired and structured mm -hmm. such that, you know, we've been taught, our parents are, you know, our guidance have probably taught us, you know, get, go to school, get those good grades. And then once you're out of the door, get into the heart of getting your cover letters and your resumes ready, right? 
and go jump onto. So that's kind of like how we've been wired. But we were not wired to, 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 to the extent of saying, get those good grades, by the way. Once you're out of there, now go do your due diligence and be that employer of labor. <laughs> so that is where I want to throw the questions out to. And in no particular order, Motorayo, can you please tell the audience who is an employer and who is an employee? Thank you so much, Mudupe. It's so wonderful to be here with you again today. And to you, our audience, we say thank you um, for being part of this uh, wonderful um, series and especially um, tonight's um, program, tonight's episode. So who is an employer? Okay, Employer of labor is that person that has a dream and actually need individuals to help in actualizing that dream. So an employee is someone that that employer engages the service of to actualize his dream. So who is an employer working for? As an employer, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as, I mean, someone that has a dream, you are working passionately for yourself. You are working passionately to actualize your dream. You know where you are going to, okay? But then when we look at it as an employee, you don't even exist in in, in the employ, em, employer's um, dream. You, The only way you can exist there is, okay, you are coming in to help him actualize his dream, right? So if you can do it, good. If you can do it, you are out of the way. And you, in your own way, as an individual, you have your dreams too, right? Yeah. So what is um, the barrier between actualizing your dream, okay, of becoming an employer of labor yourself and going to work for someone, okay? okay? So when you look at it um, critically, it's fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of can I do it, right? So who is an employer working for? An employer is working for himself. He knows the route is going. Why you as an employer, I mean employee, you are only dancing to the tune of that employer and the future is not even guaranteed for you. Mm -hmm. So I will stop there at this time. Thank you so much, Ms. Mariah. I love the fact that you nailed it from that angle of one, one person is the dreamer trying to achieve his or her dreams, while the other individual, which is the employee now, um, from, your, from your standpoint, um, working to help the other individual, the employer, achieve his or her own dreams. Thank you. I don't know if Adebola has anything to add on to that particular, who is an employer, who is an employee question. All right. So, you know, like Mushraya said, uh, if you look at it in a way, the employer has the the upper hand, you know, and uh, the employee, in a way, it's almost at the mercy of the employer. You know, whatever you do, uh, whatever you plan to achieve, it still depends on your employer. Mm -hmm. Your time depends on your employer, you know, your reward from the work you do also still depends on your employer so it's in a way it's even though it's the norm that there is an employer there is an employee but being an employee is not something that anybody wants to be forever and that's why we have something like retirement otherwise no everybody will just keep working till there'll be a time for you to oh that you want to like just get out of that uh that status and just be on yourself, be by yourself. I mean, enjoy the rest of your life. But the issue is that when does that time come comes in? When do you get to be able to say, "Oh, I'm in charge of my time. I'm, you know, in charge of my life. I'm able to do the things that I want to do without me, you know, being at the mercy of somebody else." So. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they said the most uh, important thing for an 
employee is security. Like when employees need money, they look for like a higher paying job. And that's the thing. It doesn't stop there. When you need a better life, you want to find a better job. And that's, and they, you know, the circle keeps going like that. You are never satisfied. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you get to that point and you adjusted your standard to, of living to that, and then there is need for more, then you start looking for another job. You start looking for another uh, uh, avenue to make things better. But, you know, it's not something that anybody wants to keep doing. So you keep looking for security. You keep looking for something better. You're never satisfied because the being an employee is not a position that will give you that satisfaction that you need. In the long run. Thank you so much. And I like I like the um, your school of thought there, of trying to explain to us and trying to explain to the audience that particular chain of events that is not interrupted. Mm -hmm. You think you need more, then you seek an employer of labor who probably can meet that need right and so you look at okay so who's going to pay more right and so you go in there and then you probably taking even more education and say you know what because i want that higher position let me try and go to school again and yeah. get that particular right degree again and then hopefully maybe you now have you know additional debt round about your belt right and so you can get a particular position and then the chain continues the chain of event continues and guess what time waits for no man we're getting older and older and knocking onto the door of retirement. Let's hear from Omalara. What do you think are those various pros and cons? Now that we know who an employer is, who an employee is, we looked at it from that particular perspective of saying one of them is a dreamer, very tenacious, and want to make sure you know he or she achieves that aim of that particular dream. And somebody is helping to 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 you know help in that achievement of the dream. We've also heard of um from Adebola saying that you know I mean. It's just a continuing cycle. We are not looking at the root cause. So there's a root cause, right? Because otherwise that chain of event is not going to ever stop. What are those pros and cons of being an employer and of being an employee? Can you please share your thought with the audience, Malara? All right, thank you, Mudupe, and thank you for that topic. Um, on that, I would say uh, one of the benefits um, an employer has over an employee is just that being an employer, you know, employer of labor. And then if uh, an employee is not doing a specific thing the right way, the employer wants it to go, I mean, the, the employee, it tends to get fired. And for the employee not to get fired, we need to like um, see by beyond what uh, I'm going to call um, beyond what um, an employee, I mean, beyond what the employer who, who lay down required of you, like exactly. required and an expectation. Exactly, as a rule. You slay request. yourself. You slay exactly. yourself over for the employer. Thank you. So, yeah. being an employee, I mean, we need to like look ahead to see what we can do in order to benefit ourselves. In order to like, you know, you don't want any employer to be tossing you here and there, you mm -hmm. know. And at work, you might have somebody that is low. I mean, in age. You might have okay let's say i'm let's say i'm 45 or i'm 48 or i'm 50 and mm -hmm. you have somebody under you that is your boss your manager which is probably like 25. you know you want to be like okay if the boss i mean she's your he or she is your boss regardless of age regardless Absolutely. of anything so mm -hmm. if, that, if that boss now tells you okay so so um lara can you do something for me i mean with the way he or she puts it to you you'll be like okay um i'm not i mean i'm not liable to do what you ask me to do but simply because that person is your boss you still have to do it right so if you don't do it like i said you get you get to tend uh, you tend to get fired so for you not to get fired we need to we need to come out and see what we can do for ourselves what we can do i mean a, a boss that puts a job down for you let's try to see what we can do to become our home boss Likewise, just like the boss you're working for. So you can get some people to work for you as well, to be um, an employer of labor. So being an employer of labor, you, you have time for yourself, you have time for your family, instead of you 
clocking in and clocking out you know a lot of people have more than one job some people mm. have two jobs while they are clocking in from one job they're going to another job to clock yeah. in as well so in order for all this to stop you know going in a circle of working for somebody we need to look beyond what is ahead of us so we need to like do something that our children our future can say wow you've done a great job so we need to look for a way whereby we can just like adibola said uh, adibola said that we need to so that we can retire early so we can we can do something that will give us the ability to retire early something that will give us security and that's the reason why we need to do something for ourselves to be our own boss to be our own employer of labor whereby you can i mean get some people under you if it's to train them train them teach them if they are coaching you can coach them and then from there you see things will fall into places thank you so very much um i would like to take it from here and also kind of hard on chiming and piggyback on what you said and what other ladies had mentioned to say that while our goal right is to to make sure that we deal with our root cause because whether we like it or not, man's need will forever remain insatiable. Mm -hmm. And so me working for an employer and then moving to another employer who probably can pay the bigger box, yeah. it's not going to solve my problem, no. whether I like it or not. No. <laughs> how about I look at the root cause and see how can I mitigate those root costs, right? And then deal with it. Now, is it everybody that is called for to be an employer and just write up straight off mm -hmm. like that? No, no, I don't think so. While we have some individuals who are, you know, specially, right, they're specially gifted and they could do that. We also have individuals who probably would start off being an employee and later on, you know, venture out to being an employer. So either way, we've kind of like juggled the, the ball and to see, you know, where things are. But it seems to me that the ladies on this platform are actually shooting for to say, you know what, being an employer of labor is where the thing is right now. Okay, yep. so I'm gonna have <laughs> I'm gonna have Adebola chime in on this, and uh, my my point will be that in our in our school curriculum, right, and um, we probably you know college graduates or even right now, the various you know curric the curriculum have been kind of structured such that entrepreneurial skills it's not something you find on the curriculum. I don't remember us seeing that. Yeah. Maybe when you go to MBA school, maybe you find something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's after what postgraduates. <laughs> I know, so, right? <laughs> like so, in our normal, in our normal curriculum, we don't have it that way. So it seems like our curriculum has been structured to favor more of being an employee once you get out of school, rather than being an employer. What are your thoughts to us changing that narrative, Adebola? All right. So if I understand the question very well, like you know try to like for us to have the right mindset about being an employee or and being i mean doing that and that's the norm that's the the usual thing that's what we, yeah you know. i mean the times have changed and things are really changing even within the last uh uh one year a lot changed yeah, regarding the situation a lot of people had to stay home a lot of people lost their job and even when things came back you know a bit better some even re decided not to go back mm -hmm. somebody that was doing a long commute just decided okay was why do i need to go back just being home for this past few months uh was able to maybe some people were able to work from home mm -hmm. now they're even looking for something they can do from home and in now way the cost of their traveling uh, of commuting and staying at home and the way they get and they realize that why can't I just find a job that is close by or find something that I can do? Because we realize that there is no security even in the the security that an employee is the always market. Mm -hmm. exactly. There is no security, there is no security in the job security that like we call it. Mm -hmm. So we need to have that uh the mindset of an entrepreneur, you know, versus an employee, you know. Um an entrepreneur creates stability you have something that is always there that you know that you are the owner of this you are making sure things are working well and that that is bringing you results 
and you your success does not depend or or the or the 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 success or the the goodness of your family or whoever you take it does not depend on what somebody else says so you have that mind to make things work that's one of the things it's uh uh it's great stability. That's the difference between being an employer and, and being an entrepreneur. Another thing is the fact that an employer or an entrepreneur takes ownership. And when you take ownership of something, you want to do better at it. You know it's yours. You know you uh, you want to be successful. You, you you take your business force. You want to make sure everything works well. So this is another thing that makes you. Uh, stand out and also you're not uh it, it's sort of like uh make makes you challenge yourself because you don't you know that if you're not doing it well it's not nothing is going to happen if you're not doing it well you're not going forward you're not going to get the reward that you want and you need to put everything there you take ownership of your business of your life of everything that you're doing and you make it work so you need to have that and uh sorry an entrepreneur needs to have that mindset and that's one thing that is makes them different from an employee employee doesn't care because they believe okay i'll get my pay if i as long as i do this work but we don't have to trade our time for money that's it we don't have to remain at that point whereby we need to trade our time at all time for money we need to trade our time to take care of ourselves to take care of our family it should get to a point whereby you are in charge of your time and you determine you dictate what you use your time for and you know that you're getting the reward the way you want it to be i will stop there to give uh Muturaya something to say okay all right thank you very much um so quickly before i go to um the last question i want us to look at um you know um the pros and cons of being an employee or an employer. Um, okay. I want us to quickly look at it. Um, simply put, an employee is in a comfortable zone, what you call the comfort zone. And I'm comfortable, just comfortable exactly. there because he or she is able to pay the bills. He or she is able to like, okay, I'm not able to pay all my bills 100%, but I have a paycheck coming up in two weeks. Okay, it will take care of it, and you keep living like that. But yeah, an man. employee is that guy, that lady that took that risk upon him or herself and told him or herself that life itself is a risk. Okay, me getting married to my husband is a risk. Okay, because that is how life is designed. It's wired. So, why you. do you want to? be comfortable in a comfort zone nothing happens there that is why the employer stepped out okay and when you look at outside the comfort zone a lot happens there and because it's outside of the comfort zone that is why you see little few people there so those that had opportunity to be there that took that risk upon themselves are able to, uh, you know, benefit largely from that section. So uh, then I will go to the fact that the last question, um, which is, you know, all our curriculum and everything like that, most of it, most of it, mm -hmm. okay? Most of it do not teach you or put you through the fact that you can get out of here yeah, and appreciate your certificate. Mm -hmm. And you can just be an employer of labor right away. You can, if at, at, at initially you're not able to employ other people, at least you can employ yourself. Okay? You can take charge of your own life. You can lay a legacy, a legacy for you and your children, right? So even though you and I did not pass through that, we were not opportune to be taught um, being an entrepreneur, in a four corners of the or the four corners of a school, there are a lot of opportunities out there. Even the ones that are included in the curriculum and you are being taught, 
you still need to practice, right? You still need to do some self-research. You still need to do some due diligence, some certification here and there, right? Mm -hmm. That is why we are saying even being an entrepreneur is a thing of a mind. You accept the fact that, okay, I am ready to step out of my comfort zone. What is needed? I am done running and letting other people dictate my life. And not just my life, my children's life, my family life. Yeah. Okay? What do I need to do? I did that. I will use myself as an example. You know, I'm a teacher. Uh, before becoming an entrepreneur, a, a digital business entrepreneur, I'll be in, in the school sometimes. I love my children. I love as in the students I take care of, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes once my mind switched, once it switched, I'm like, I'll save my children. Mm -hmm. And once I know that my children are not, I mean, I'm, I'm so concerned about them, you will see that I will have divided attention, isn't it? That's right. But if I run my own business, if I'm an entrepreneur myself, my children will not only enjoy, my family will not only enjoy my presence, they will also, they will also in a way uh, begin to shift their mind about the fact that I need to finish schooling and start scouting for jobs here and there. I can do what mom is doing. I can do what dad is doing, which is working for themselves, working from home, right? Becoming employers of labor. So even though we are not taught in school, it's not in most of our curriculum. We can be self-taught. And guess what? There are a lot of systems out there, which I would take mine, ours, our business as one. I don't think if there is a curriculum in the school, it will be as, I mean, inclusive as ours is. Mm -hmm. We have a step-by-step -step training. I was not taught how to become a, an entrepreneur, but I joined this business and I can say what I've not been able to do in two years, I'm able to do now. So if it can work for me, guess what? It can work for anybody. What I say is, a typical mm -hmm. village lady like myself can do it. A skeptical person like myself, guess what? Anybody can be an entrepreneur. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Victoria. Yeah, it's all about having <laughs> the right mindset. You know? exactly. Yeah, it is. It is. And I and I really want to tell our audience is that these ladies on this platform are not joking at all. These ladies are rocking it. They're rocking it in their entrepreneurial field. They are rocking it so good. They are crushing their goals as if, hmm, as if they were born for it. I know, so right? watch out for these ladies, okay? Watch out for these ladies. They are not joking at all. Anyway, I also want to chime in and kind of wrap up. We had a two-edged sword this evening on our topic, but with the way things are going, I think what do you work for is kind of taking, you know, is taking um, the blow, but that's okay. Since we're always, always always going to be here to meet with our audiences, we will, you know, we can carry over um, a topical discussion for another time. I just wanted to add on to say that everybody has dreams, whether we like it or not. Whether it now depends on are you really actualizing your dreams or you've probably left your dream to wallow, you know, um, in silence. And somebody has it to say that 97% of people have dashed out their dreams, right? They dashed it out and they are being hired by the remaining 3% of people who persuaded, you know, their own dreams ferociously with every tenacity in them. And, you know, they just keep burning. They're doing everything. So, I mean, our word to our audience this evening is don't be that, don't be that 97%, right? Be that 3% of individuals. We will go for your dream. We will go over and beyond, you know, and be that employer. Now, guess what Warren Buffett said? Warren Buffett said that um, if you don't find a way to make money while you are asleep, you probably will work until you die. Um, today we have, tomorrow, nobody's promised. Mm -hmm. But what exactly are you doing to safeguard your future, your children's future, your children's legacy? Guess what the Bible says? It says a righteous man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. 
I don't think a typical nine to five is going to get us there. I don't think a typical nine to five will really do justice to making sure we have, you know, that for our children's children. Another thing I also wanted to add on is, and I kind of, I, I believe I stumbled on that code and said that no one make it big in life, working for someone else as an employee. We want to really make it big, right? Mm -hmm. I like um, the way Malara and Adebola mentioned and said that, you know, um, you you work, you want higher income, then you shoot for it again. You, you leave particular that employer. So you keep like upping from one employer to another employer. And then when you get to that employer, you find yourself comfortable, you adjust your standard of living. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, your needs become insatiable again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, you begin the cycle. Friends, folks, that's not a good spot to be. And on that note, I'll leave us with what Zig Zagler said. But before I do that, I'm going to take a round robin and have all the ladies on the platform say one or two things. Omolara, do you have a final word for the audience? Please. Um, yeah, thank you once again, Mudupe. And uh, what I'm just going to say is um, I know everybody have this thing in them which is called fear, fear hmm. of the unknown, just like uh, Muturayo said. You know, they don't want to step out of their comfort zone to see what's going on out there. But if you keep doing that, the nine to five, what we're doing cannot do, you can't just do it. So that's why we need to step out of our comfort zone, see what it's out there. I mean, it's uh, it, um, the the digital world, the space, the digital space, it's, a, it's enough to work uh, to, I mean, to accompany everybody. Mm -hmm. So all we need to do, like uh, Modupe said once again, that we need to do our due diligence, see what's going out there. It's a lot of um, scam out there. I get it, it's a lot of scam. But just when you do your due diligence, see um, the possibility of you getting into the right, the right business. So when you get the right business, just tap into it. I mean, we're growing every day. Our children are growing. We need to lay a good legacy for our children. And then if you are watching us today, we want you to do your due diligence and see what this business can do for you. Thank you so much. Um, Hadebola, final parting okay. word for the audience. Okay. So we, we talked about employee and, and employers. And I just want to leave this with us that, you know, while an employer look for results, the employee is looking at tenor at, you know, not even the efforts, I mean, looking at their tenor and the effort they are putting in. And the reward is not even, it's not based on that, it's based on the results. So mm -hmm. tenor and effort are worthless unless you have results. Mm -hmm. And I will say that um, the reality of it all is that being an employee is highly risky. It is risky. It's not something that anybody should dwell on for too long. You have no control and you pay, we will pay the highest taxes, at least from where we are in the part of the world. And if business gets bad enough, you know, it's, it gets bad enough, you are the first one to be laid off, especially if you are asking for more money at that time. So you don't want to be caught in that, in that, uh, race. In, exactly. You don't want to, you know, keep just be at that spot and just hoping that, oh, my, Pay will be raised or i will do better to get a better money we need we all need passive income we all need additional stream of income anyhow you want to get it done it's just a necessity being an employee is not going to get you there i've always planned to retire early i plan to retire at 40 you know and uh, my, my my goal that is the goal for me and i'm still going to make it even though i didn't make it at 40 i'm looking forward that very soon you know i'm going to to get there because that's just what that's how life should be retire early and enjoy the rest of your life and you know build a legacy that your family your children could could enjoy afterwards so it's time to take the decision it's time to just take that step and just change your mindset about being an employee it's very risky thank you so much Adebola. watch out for these ladies they're going to retire very soon these are millionaires, billionaires of tomorrow. Watch out for them. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Last parting <laughs> word for the for the audience. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I want to say thank you to all our audience for your time this evening. And if you're watching the replay, thank you. But I want to leave you with this. 
As you're going to bed tonight, <laughs> say your prayers, put your head on your pillow, and tell God to revive your dream. Mm. Because How? we all have it. Revive, <laughs> Lord, revive, revive my, dream. my dream. That's the prayer yes. point. Okay. And don't just revive it. Open my eyes, my outer and my inner eyes to see the right path to go. Hello, friends. Look at this. Don't be scared of being a digital entrepreneur. Okay? You are spending money online every now and then, right? That means you can also earn online. That's right. Why continue to spend on online and not work towards earning, I mean, earning a lot online? <laughs> A lot, right? So it is possible. Don't, it is okay. It is healthy to be skeptical. But when it lingers for forever, it is very, very dangerous. Okay? Try a step. It said a, 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 a journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. Right. Take yes. that step of stepping out of your comfort zone. Okay? So I love you. We'll see you. <laughs> revive your dream. Lord, revive my dream. That's your love prayer. That's the yeah, prayer point to the one. audience. Okay. Yeah. I hope everybody took note. And for our audiences, we'll probably will catch up on the replay later. That's a word from Motoraya Emily, all the way from Houston, Texas. She's saying, please pray that the Lord will revive our dreams. Um, at this junction, it's been a pleasure. And thank you so much for those who joined online. I saw Nwa. Thank you for the greetings. Um, I believe I also saw Pastor Mikunle. Thank you very much, sir, for um, for your support. Uh, for your support and um, to all of our other audiences and those who will probably catch up on the replay later, we really sincerely do appreciate your support. Um, we will continue on this series. Um, we will be coming on, you know, um, to educate because we are in that business of educating. We are in the business of engaging. We are in the business of teaching and mentoring. Together in our community, we coach individuals who are passionate and try, who really want that change for themselves, who have a great mindset, who are willing to be coachable, who also want to step out of that you know, comfort zone and dish out of the status quo, take a step of faith, take a leap of faith and change lives for themselves and also you know, for, their, um, for their loved ones. A lot of people in our community are doing that. We have testimonials. A lot of us on here you know, could testify to that and that's what we are doing that's what we are helping people to do. We're helping real life individuals do this from day to day. I'll leave us with a word from Zig Zaglar, which says that if you're not willing to learn, right, no one can help you. If you're, you know, you know you've made up your mind that, you know what, it's okay, I'm, I'm just gonna be there. I don't wanna learn. No one is gonna be able to help you. But if you make up your mind and you're determined, right, nothing is gonna stop you, only if you stop yourself. On that note, I leave you with God's blessings. And um, myself and the ladies on the platform, we say thank you and stay blessed until next time. Bye for now. Bye.